Good morning, Facebook. If you're watching this, I'm out of Facebook jail. Yes, I was gone for almost a whole week because I was in Facebook jail. Twice in two weeks, Facebook jail. All because of my unicorn poop fat bum video. Um, it was a cooking video that showed these little fat bomb cheesecakes that are so good and so cute. And it was either because of the poop in the title or the swearing in the video. Somebody reported it and Facebook deemed it as content not appropriate. So I was in Facebook jail. So now I am out. And I promise you I will try not to swear in this video. Um, I like being free like a free bird. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I haven't given you guys an update lately on how I have been doing um, medically, you know, inside and out. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Tammy. I'm from a small little town in Wisconsin. Um, I make these videos to help people on their weight loss journey. I also help people with heart failure, dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertension, hypothyroidism, and I also have an ICD unit, uh, pacemaker and defibrillator. Um, just to give you a little bio on my story in 2013, the day after my 40th birthday, <laughs> happy birthday to me, um, I was diagnosed with heart failure. And I currently have an ejection fraction rate of 22%, which basically means how much blood is pumped in and out of your heart. Um, a normal person runs at 60 to 65%. I also have dilated cardiomyopathy, which means an enlargement of the heart. I have hypertension, which I don't have anymore, so I'm going to have to talk to the doctor on that one to get rid of it off my chart, because the last time I was there, it was like 100, 100 over 70 without medication. And I have hypothyroidism which means my thyroid runs like a turtle on Benadryl. And when I started in um, 2013, when I got diagnosed, I was on a buttload of medications. I mean, metoprolol, lisinopril, losartan, furosemide, um, blood thinners, you name it, I was probably on it. And I really didn't give a crap about my diet for two and a half years. I mean, honestly, I don't even think I ate a piece of fruit in those two and a half years. I mean, it was crap. I didn't care. And then I died on March 29th, 2016. My defibrillator brought me back. Thank God. My cardiologist at the time at the hospital was on vacation and another one stepped in. And he said, Tammy, I went over your chart. And if this doesn't effing wake you up, what will? Well, it did. And that's when um, I started the ketogenic diet. Now, I weighed 361 pounds. I was a big girl. I was a big girl. I had a water limit of 33 ounces and a sodium limit of 1,200 milligrams. And as you guys know, the ketogenic diet is very high in sodium. But you can do it on a lower sodium restriction. Trust me, it works. So anyways, um, within the matter of three to four weeks of doing the ketogenic diet, furosemide, gone. Why? Because carbs contain water. For every one gram of carb comes three to four grams of water. So if you eat 400 grams of carbs a day, that's an extra pound of water. And the ketogenic diet is a high fat, moderate pro protein, low carb diet. And so my water retention, gone. Don't need furosemide, gone. So now, about a month, month and a half into um, my first four-month goal, blood thinners, gone. Why? Because I was exercising more and I was watching what I was eating. Didn't need that. All right, cool. Now, my energy levels were through the roof. I mean, that was a bonus for me. Losing weight was great. My TSH was optimal, which is for my thyroid. It was optimal. It was 0.93. Okay. Now I set a goal of four months to lose a hundred pounds by my son's birthday on August 3rd. I figured why not? What a gift. I've seen extreme weight loss. I have seen biggest loser and I figured if they can do it, so can I. But I gave myself four month increment goals for a year to lose weight. And in the first four months, I lost 101 pounds doing keto. And then somebody told me I needed carbs because I was weightlifting heavier. And of course, I didn't know the research, you know, like I do now. And I listened and I did macro flexible dieting. 
from about September of 2016 until about December of 2017. I hit my goal weight in 14 and a half months. I lost another 70 pounds. And I hit my goal weight in November of 2017 of 190 pounds. And of course, you know, with Christmas and New Year's, I partied a little bit too much and I gained 10 pounds back. So in January, I made the decision, let's get these 10 pounds off, right? So I sat down and I made a list. The pros of keto, the cons of keto. The pros of macro flexible dieting, the cons of macro flexible dieting. And I made the decision to stick with keto. Well, within a matter of, I would have to say, like four to five months, I lost those 10 pounds. I mean, it was a struggle. When you're on your last 20 pounds, it's like this. It's not like this. It's all over the place, up, down, up, down, up, down. So those last 10 pounds I had were a complete pain in my, you know what. So. Then I made the decision when I hit my goal weight again of 190 pounds that I was going to stick with the ketogenic diet for life. And the reason being is number one, I'm never starving. I'm macro flexible dieting. I was starving. I was hungry because I was eating those empty carbs. I am always full on the ketogenic diet. Why? Because of the high fat and the, high, and the moderate protein. Both of those together are a satiator for me. Two, the energy level. Oh my God. I have so much energy throughout the day. It's not even funny. I'm not on that sugar crash. My, I am stable just like that all day long. I sleep better. I wake up refreshed. My skin is clearer. A lot of people tell me I look younger than 45. Um, the inflammation in my body, my arthritis in my knees, as you guys know, I have severe arthritis in my right knee. Gone. Even when it rains or snows, gone. Um, joint pain, gone. Um, I just feel all together, all around, head to toe, beautiful on the ketogenic diet. And that's why I chose to stick with it for life. But now, this is where... I may feel good and look good on the outside and everything, but it's on the inside that counts. So I'm going to go over my lipid panels and all my blood work. And I want my hypothyroidism peeps to pay attention to this, okay? It's just a theory. I haven't found any studies or anything like that on um, the ketogenic diet and hypothyroidism that actually connect the two, but it's just a theory, all right? So cholesterol. Everybody's always worried about cholesterol, 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 cholesterol. Now, I did a four-part series on cholesterol, triglycerides, HDL, LDL, what each one of them does, how to read your panel. It has the studies. It has the links. It has everything to it, the science, all that stuff. It's over on YouTube, another shameless plug, under Keto Tams, T-A-M-Z, okay? So just look for that. So I had to do some digging on this one. And let me tell you, I did some pretty good digging, all right? So in June of 2016, now this is when I just started the ketogenic diet, okay? My cholesterol was 165. My triglycerides were 249. My HDL was 27. My LDL was 88. Now, I was on a statin at the time. That's why my cholesterol was so low. And I'm going to tell you something. My memory sucked. The, my joint pain was ridiculous. The muscle soreness was ridiculous. And I think people can understand who take a statin have those same kind of side effects. Now, on a cholesterol panel, you want to look at your triglyceride to HDL ratio. You want to take your triglycerides divided by your HDL. And that will show a marker for heart disease. Now, with my triglycerides in my, uh, at 249 and HDL at 27, my trig to HDL uh, ratio was 9.2. If it's below 2, you're good. If it's above 4, you're high. And if it's above 6, it's dangerous. So it was 9.2 in June of 2016. Now, in May of 2018, 
my cholesterol was 247. That's because I stopped my statin in February of 2018. My triglycerides were 55. My HDL was 49. My LDL is 188. And my triglyceride to HDL ratio was 1.12. So it's below 2. In August of 2018, my cholesterol is 256. My triglyceride was 60, my HDL was 50, and my LDL was 194. Trig to HDL ratio, 1.2. So still below 2. So according to my cholesterol panel, my lipid panel, my heart is doing great. Now, the true marker of heart disease is a CRP test, C-reactive protein. It checks for inflammation in the blood. Now, they do it once a year. And in uh, September of 2017, it was 0 0.05. And a CPR or CPR, CRP range is 0 to 0 0.5. Okay, that's normal range. Mine was 0 0.05. In August of 2018, it was less than 0 0.05. Three. So even according to my CRP test, I the inflammation is low in my body for cardiac disease, for another heart attack, okay? Doing the ketogenic diet. Basic chem panel. Everything's great. Basic chem panel checks for like sodium, chloride, potassium, all those other things. Great on all of those. My fasting glucose, okay? How much sugar is in my body when I am fasting? In September of 2017, it was 103. That's when I was doing macro flexible dieting. When I could eat whatever the hell I want as long as I, you know, got the calories and hit my protein. In May of 2018, after doing the ketogenic diet since January, it was 97. In August of 2018, is 90. So it's slowly going down in the normal range anywhere from 70 to 100 for somebody without diabetes. So even according to um, my fasting glucose, beautiful. Now, this one is for my hypothyroidism peeps. Okay, listen up. I'm not saying the ketogenic diet is what made my, um, well, actually I am. I believe that the ketogenic diet is what makes my TSH in optimal range. And this is why. In February of 2015, when I didn't give a shit about my diet. Oh, I just swore. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't give a crap about my diet. My TSH was 4.0 in February of 2015. After doing the ketogenic diet, now I was on the same dosage of levothyroxine. April of 2016, it was 0.93, okay? Then, of course, I switched to macro-flexible dieting, which means I ate Pringles and I ate Cheetos and Kit Kats and all that crap. In December of 2017, it went to 3.0, okay? In May of 2018, after starting keto in January, it went to 1.1. In August of 2018, it is now 0.533. Same dosage between May and August. Same dosage between February and December. I'm telling you. If you guys know anything about TSH and hypothyroidism, the optimal range, I believe, is between like 0.4 and 1.2, okay? Obviously, when I'm not doing keto, it goes up. But when I'm doing keto, it puts me in optimal range with the same dosage of levothyroxine. So do I believe ketogenic diet has an effect on the TSH? Yes, I do. And I just all over feel better on it. The energy is amazing. And like I said, 
two main reasons why I do it. I am never starving and the energy. Those are the two main reasons why I do the ketogenic diet. And as of today, I am on Candace Arton, two milligrams, which is a half a baby dose um, at night for heart failure. I am on a baby aspirin, which I will be a lifer on, I'm sure. And I take levothyroxine for my thyroid, which I will be a lifer on. But I am not going to go back to taking 12 pills a day by going back to the standard American diet. There's no way. I can't do that to myself. I will be a lifer on keto because I just feel amazing on it. I'm not saying it's the miracle diet. I'm not saying that, you know, it's the cure for, you know, heart disease or whatever. But I am telling you, there's the Mediterranean diet that has worked well for people. There's the paleo diet. There is Whole30, you know, Weight Watchers, whatever. But I'm going to tell you this. The secret to all of those diets is you're shopping on the outside perimeter of the grocery store. It's when you go to the inside of the um, grocery stores where it gets dangerous. If you just stick to the outside aisles, you'll do fine. All right, you guys. Oh, and if you have heart failure and you have to watch your sodium, you can do ketogenic diet. Even though they say it is high sodium, you can do it. I'm on 1,500 milligrams of sodium a day. If I go over that, I swell like a balloon. You guys know that by now. So I will talk with you guys later. I can't say enough about ketogenic diet. It works for me. More cardiologists are coming around now saying that it is working. Watch the magic pill on Netflix. Go to ruledme.com. It tells you the science on how the body works, what kinds of foods you can eat on the ketogenic diet. Um, you guys, that's why I do it. And according to my blood work, I am healthy on the inside and on the outside. All right, you guys, I will talk with you later. And let's hope I stay out of Facebook jail today. All right, bye.